Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction and the armor wizard, Zap Zap. Hot off the presses, I just got this in from RMA in full transparency. They sent this particular plate over for me to destroy with no strings attached. What makes this particular panel unique is this is their female offering, model 1118. This 1118 panel is one of three components that makes up the female armor kit, or the queen kit is what I think they call it. This 9 by 11 panel is our front section because again, it has all the curves. There is a proprietary single curve rear plate that goes in the female plate carrier and that specific plate carrier is designed to snugly fit these odd shaped plates. There is extra padding on the top and bottom because of the curvature. This particular panel is 1.05 inches thick or 26.66 millimeters for those across the pond. It weighs six pounds, 15.3 ounces or 3.15 kilograms. It may be hard to see, but there are a lot of sexy curves right there with that plate, mainly right here. You can see how much that dips down now in comparison. Here is a multi-curve polyethylene plate, no, no brand one that I picked up off of AliExpress. You can see we've got a curve there and there. And here is what a single curve offering would look like. You have just that one gentle rolling curve right there. So depending on your body type, this particular panel may be advantageous to get that nice snug fit. I do have some video footage where I had my wife try it on and I myself even tried it on. And depending on your body size and type and how much stuff you have up top, it may fit you quite well compared to say the single curve. Now, if this is the first time you're visiting my channel, I do all my armor demos completely different than pretty much everyone on YouTube. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at the official NIJ testing distance, which is 45 feet. We also shoot at zero degrees because that's worst case scenario. If you take anything away from my demos, I'm always after worst case. So if we stop M2AP going 3,100 feet per second at 45 feet, there is likely no plausible way that someone shooting that same load from a shorter barrel length is going to have any effect at distance. We also use a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX, again, because we need to know the velocity of that particular round as it strikes the panel. We have a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina, number one clay. That acts as our compressible media, just like the NIJ uses, but I don't heat it to the spec temperature and certify it with a ball dropping, so it's just a representation of what back face could be. And it also keeps us from letting the body armor swing around or disperse some of that energy by making the plate fly, fly around. It's just a solid mounted object for the plate to act up against and it kind of mimics the body a little bit because it allows that type of compression. Since this does employ a ceramic strike face per the NIJ, we've gone ahead and dropped it on its face two times as a preconditioning test. For all of my new body armor testing, after we've done that drop test, we mark a DT after we've done that and we also do a torque test. That's where we take the plate and we apply opposing forces on each end as a way to flex the plate and listen for any cracks. If we don't hear any cracks, we mark a TQ and that this plate, I don't hear any cracks. RMA's plate does employ a edge to edge ceramic strike face, meaning that the ceramic strike face extends all the way to the edge behind or in front of our polyethylene. There are some companies or designs that will sell you a lighter weight plate, mainly because there is a foam ring that extends on the outer perimeter of the panel because the NIJ will not shoot any closer than two inches from the edge, mainly because of the uh, uncontrollable variables that a bullet path could take on close edge shots. And finally, we put a spreadsheet here at the beginning that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. We mark our velocities and our penetrations, and we do a tear down at the end so we can see what the guts of our plate look like on the inside. It's around 80 to 85 degrees outside today. Now, a little bit of a CYA thing. I'm not an NIJ lab and I don't pretend to be one. I try to mimic and hold myself to some of those protocols that they've developed so that we have some consistent data to take away from these tests. If you see me have a penetration over here on my channel, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited NIJ lab test reports to show that that round can be stopped. And on the flip side, if you're the manufacturer and you see me stop, say, M995 going 
around 3,300 feet per second against your panel. You should send that off to the lab and have it accredited for a special rifle threat rating on that particular panel. All right, it's time to get down and dirty. We got our plate strapped up down there, 45 feet. We have our TC Compass in 300 Winchester Magnum. We've got a Phantom M2 up front to keep the golfers and neighbors happy with the sound suppression. We have two shots of M2 armor piercing. That is the official NIJ threat protocol for level four. However, that's only one shot center of mass. We're gonna take two hits. Now, as I mentioned with surplus M2 AP, you usually will not see over 2750 in a 24 inch barrel. The NIJ calls for 2880, so that's why I've loaded it in our 300 Winchester Magnum. I have plus P plus variants of this, but I'm not sure how thick the strike face is. So we're just gonna go with two standard pressure loads. Although it is warmer outside today, so I'm probably gonna be about 50 feet over spec. This one I'm gonna place the upper left of the plate, kind of where, oh, where it says the R for RMA and their shield. And we were 100 feet over spec. I guess I need to dial these loads back. I had these perfected, and I don't know if it's just the temperature this year. And then this shot is going to be on the R of armor. Not sure if that red. Those shots are fairly easy to tell apart. Shot number one and shot number two. Now, this is only a nine by 11 plate, so I'm not gonna get a ton of hits on here. So we're gonna have to play this carefully, but no pass through folks. Two shots of M2 AP. Now, I didn't build the clay up behind it. So again, the back face is a representation. Always defer to official NIJ testing for official numbers. But let's check this guy out down here. 28 millimeters, so not too shabby. You can see from the back, there's just a slight bulge. Normally, if we see excessive bulging, that's where, you know, back face becomes an issue. We've got an alumina strike face, our standard white ceramic. Typically, probably why this plate weighs a little more than average. Normally, if you go to a silicon carbide or boron, you can lighten the weight, but the cost of material goes up. We'll save as much of this plate as we can and see what we can do. Given our current world climate with the Russian-Ukraine conflict war, whatever you want to call it, I figured this would be a good threat and I brought it out for another one. This is 545 by 39. This is a 52-53 grain full metal jacket, 7N6M for modernized. Same core as our 7N6, which is very abundant worldwide, but it has been hardened to right around 60 on the C scale. Now again, because I'm all about worst case scenario and being the king of armor destruction, we've got an SSG82. This is a 24 inch barrel bolt action chambered in 545 by 39. I do believe there are only 2,000 of these worldwide and 600 of them in the US. I'd like to thank my buddy Andy Morris for donating this ammunition for us to test. I think early 90s Bulgaria, like late 91, 92 is when you can almost be guaranteed that all of this ammunition is the modernized version. There's no way externally to tell the difference. What's cool about this little bolt gun, it just has a very light trigger. It's like half pound, very little take up. The trigger shoe on the other hand is very fragile. I had one 3D printed out of metal so we can preserve the original one. So this will be probably where it says the K for King. Thirty one hundred feet per second, not bad. And then this one. Good velocity. We brought out the 556 five, threats. I have three flavors, although a reduced number, because again, I only have one plate. I should have requested two, 
but sometimes Corey says I'm a little needy. So I have our 55 grain full metal jacket M193 known for popping steel armor out to about 20 yards with 16 inch and longer barrels depending on the power or brand that you buy, Independence or Lake City Winchester, good full power M193. Then we have M855 or SS109, 62 grain full metal jacket, current NATO loading for everyone. Then we have the US Army's current issue ball round, M855A1, the evolution of M855, enhanced performance round. It's a copper core, lead free, you know, lead free, environmentally friendly, with a large hardened arrowhead steel tip, right around 60 on the C scale. We'll go check our plate after these shots and then see if there's any left for subsequent shots, but I don't think there's going to be. We're gonna put these, the upper part of the plate. Good velocity though. Now the M855. Hmm. Better be careful. I'll put this below the M2AP shot. No, no, no. I'll go to the right of the A. 30, 35, pretty good velocity. The A1. This one will be right on the star, folks. Nice. All right, let's go see what we did. Okay, there's a lot going on here, and it's hard to write on our nylon cover. These two shots of M193 were on the top part of the plate. Well close to maybe half inch from the edge if that would not be considered fair hits in the NIJ's eyes. Our M855 number one was over here and then number two that was on the edge too right around three quarters of an inch. Our 545 shot was down here. A1 shot number one and number two. Then our other 545 shot was definitely not a fair hit. I put that shot literally right on top of the compromised area from the M2AP. Again, this is why I'm not an NIJ lab. Mistakes happen out here. Place those bets in the comments below. Uh oh, Raggy. We've got three penetrations. Our second hit of M193 that non-fair hit of 7N6M, then that second shot of M855. Likely, from what I can see, our strike face is not laminated, so it is not faring well against multi-hits. Now, if you spaced a lot of 556 threats on this, it would stop them all day, no problem, but it looks like the energy from the M2AP pretty much did a number on the strike face and I don't know if I should shoot any more shots at it or not. I can see it now. Corey's screaming at me through the screen to stop shooting. Don't shoot any more threats at it. But I want to shoot two more shots of M855A1 on the bottom of the plate. I think there's a fair bit of ceramic down there that could take these shots and I just want to finish out the plate Anyways, so we brought the TC compass back out. The mosquitoes are starting to come out, so we need to finish up out here. So this one's gonna be... Lower left above where the uh, thickness measurement is in metric. Probably gonna regret this shot, folks, but what for you guys, why not? All right, now I just hit myself in the face. 
Let's go see what we did. Our final two hits of M855A1, shot number one, and then shot number two. Those are about two inches from the edge. Hey, no pass through folks. We'll pull the cover off here in a minute on the teardown and make sure that that's just a broken cover there. And now for the teardown. Let's see what our 1118 female cut plate is made out of. Our confirmed only penetrations were the M193, the M855A1 shot number two on the first string, and the 7N6M that was literally placed on top. Here is our backing material. It does appear pressed. It looks like the same material that they are using in the 1155. It's more of that like uh, coarse, gritty, like a fiberglass almost, not like polyethylene. I'm not, I think it's called e-glass. Anyways, it looks like the 1155. I double checked that second hit of M855A1 and it did not penetrate. That penetrating core though did get pretty deep. There was the A1 shot, then the M193. I measured this 350 thousandths down here in the corner, 380 elsewhere. I did start to separate it a little bit from all that energy, but you can see that it is pressed because it's not literally like a book that you can thumb through and separate each layer. Here is the front side. Like I said, here was the M2AP shot, and then 7 and 6 M was right there. I literally wanted it to be here, and again, I make mistakes. You can see the first shot of M855A1 on the second go at it didn't get very far, but then that one was likely in a compromised area and made it a little ways farther. Our M855 on the edge, look at how close that is to the edge, stopped no problem. We do have drop face foam on our strike face, around 240 thousandths thick. That's about par for the course. This ceramic is very, very thick. It is not laminated. You can see how much of it is all over our table here. I measured that right around 420 thousandths thick, which seems par for the course. I'm always offering constructive criticism based on my experience. I'm not a scientist or engineer or any of that, but based on my years of destroying armor, including RMA's armor, I would like to see the strike face laminated. That's where they use a type of adhesive and a fiberglass or aramid covering over it. And it's basically a sandwich and it keeps all of this ceramic that you see here in one place. It's laminated so that multiple shots don't degrade the strike face as much it doesn't blow off chunks of it like we see here now that's obviously going to add to cost of labor and materials there but i think it goes a long way to making plates more multi-hit capable although again in nij testing level four only has to stop one m2 ap load center of mass and that's pretty much all there is there is no foam on the back side of the plate that we can see there is a little bit on the edges there but there is no blunt force trauma foam on the back cool well folks who do you think won the king of armor rma or the king of armor destruction i think our female cut 1118 plate performed the specification we stopped two rounds of M2 armor piercing. I had a feeling if I had another plate, we could probably stack four hits on there comfortably, at least, you know, one in each corner and one in the bottom corners, and it would probably stop those. I do like that we're able to stop some 556 five, threats after compromising the plate, but based on how this plate was constructed, the strike face isn't laminated. A lot of those shots tend to quickly degrade the strike face, and then sometimes, because I make mistakes, some rounds find their way through. If you are of the female persuasion and you are looking for a better and tighter fitting armor kit, definitely give the 1118 and the Queen setup a hard look. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here because the mosquitoes are biting the crap out of me. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them that you guys don't see. You know, there's 20 to 30 hours of editing, 
plus driving time, unloading, shooting, loading, et cetera, et cetera. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below. There's various ways to contact me or support me. I have affiliate links and or commission-based tracking links that earn me a commission. I do have a discount code through RMA. It is Buffman and it saves you, I do believe, 5% off your order and it costs you nothing. And then what I do with those commissions is I go and buy more ammo or different types of things like I just dropped fifteen hundred dollars on the Roma Plastilina number one clay for some new boxes and each one of those M2 AP shots is getting expensive at four dollars a round so there's a lot that goes into them. Number two are my friends Blake and Corey over at RMA again in full transparency sent me that plate to destroy with no strings attached and of course number three is you all for watching until next time I'll catch you at the range. Thank <laughs> you.